Okay, guys. So let's let's talk a little bit about cable management. Um, you know, when I first started in this hobby, I had cables running all over the mount, laying everywhere, and I'm not a very cluttery kind of guy. I like things to be very uh, easy to manage and to get to. And I, I would just have tons of cables hanging off the back of my camera. You know, I'd have my, my pack on the ground. I'd have cables running from the laptop, and it was just utterly ridiculous. And when I got the new G11, I decided that I would uh, try to improve upon that. And so I've gone several routes, and I finally finally decided on one uh, that seems to be working pretty well. And uh, I've tested it out and everything. So I'm just going to show you what I did, and maybe you can get some ideas off of it as well. I haven't gotten to the stage of you know putting in a, a, a DC pack here and have everything running into the DC for the power to keep all the cables and everything on top of the telescope and one of the reasons is because I've got another scope as well now <laughs> too I got a wide field so some of the stuff is gonna have to come off and go back onto the other scope you know, as well plus you know here at the house I'm running off of AC not off of uh, DC but um, so here's what I did uh, to, to start off with we'll uh, we'll go down here to the bottom and one of the first things I did was to, you know, the, the Gemini 2 and the Lismani don't come with a, a hand controller mount anywhere on it, so it's just like always sitting in your hand. So all I did was put a little bit of uh, Velcro on the leg and then a little bit here on the back of the keypad just so I can have some place to stick it. And then I also took a piece of Velcro uh, right here and put it on the side of the leg and put one on the back of the AC adapter. Um, so that it would run right up to the Gemini 2, right there. So I'm trying to use a headlamp so you can see a little better, especially when it's you know, black on black. Um, and then I took another piece of Velcro, and this is the uh, AC power pack for the camera. And I stuck it over here on this leg and put the outlet wire coming out of the top rather than the bottom. And I'll show you why that is here in just a minute. The um, So what I did was uh, I went to Home Depot and here let me let me show you what I got here and if you go over to the electrical department they have this pack of uh, split sleeve uh, what do they call it splits uh, I'm sorry split flex tubing little pack of it here I want to say it was like four or five dollars and it's ten foot but it comes in two sizes. It's like one inside of another size. So you actually are getting 20 feet and you get a half inch and you get a three eighths. And what I found is on the half inch, which is uh, this stuff here on the half inch, you can get three USB cables inside of it. Um, or in my case was two USB cables and one cat five cable. And again, it was, it was like four or five dollars. And they also had um, these rolls of Velcro. It was uh, 50 highs, and they're eight inch by half inch long. They just come in a spool and you just peel them apart. And there's two different colors, black and gray. And uh, again, Home Depot, I wanna say it's like $34, something like that. And then I just got a roll of Velcro, uh, sticky sided Velcro, you know, with the male and the female portion of it. And then some good old handy uh, red electrical tape. A pair of scissors to do the trimming. And then I got a pack of, of zip ties and I was basically using the, the tiny little zip ties which I'll, I'll show you here in just a minute what all that was for. So what I did first was, um, you know, I was operating, most of the cables you get with equipment nowadays is like six foot. And I went online to uh, Amazon and I bought 10 foot cables. So I had, I'd gotten a 10 foot uh, USB 2, uh, a 10 foot uh, USB, and then of course um, for the 
the focuser here, there it is, the nine pin uh, VBA, I got a 10 foot one of those. That one was hard to come by. That one's a little bit more difficult. And then I also got a, a 10 foot Cat5 crossover cable. And what I did was I took that split, that split flex stuff, and I just rolled them in there, and you, you just peel it apart, and then you just insert the wires, and you just kind of go down the line, pushing them into uh, the sleeving. So if you split the sleeving away, you can see there's actually two cables in there. And then wherever a cable has to peel out, um, you don't have to run all the way to the end. The nice thing about uh, with the split cables, you can just bring it right out and then put a tie just below it or just under it or both and that way it doesn't continue to pull out which is what I did here so I was running my autofocuser cable my USB 2.0 cable and the uh, cat5 all the way up to this point which came down here out of the, uh, the control box which is where the mini computer is and the power pack and the focuser control and then just ran it up and when I got to this point which was I measured everything out uh, you know where I wanted it and then just let it come out here and then just put a little zip tie there to keep it from continuing to spread down and then I just connected it hung it up threw another piece of velcro over it went yellow with yellow <laughs> um, and as you well, I'll come down here so you can see what I was doing. So when I came out of the box here, um, I just cut a small hole in the side and then just laid this in here. So this it's actually accomplishes a couple things. Number one is um, your cables aren't getting frayed as they're moving around the mount, which is uh, probably a good thing. And the uh, sleeving itself takes a lot more of the bending and twisting and pulling without having a, a bad effect on your wiring because you're gonna have a little bit more play, you know, play in here for stretching and stuff which is what's gonna get snagged rather than the actual wire pulling out. So I've got three wires coming out of here here on the bottom. Get my light on there. Three wires coming out of here and then this wire right here is uh, the temperature probe for the Moonlight Focuser. And I took those little 8 inch strips and just tied them together and brought all three cables up. And then when I got up here to the top, I let the temperature probe just come out to the side. And what I found with this temp probe is that if I left it in the box, it would actually catch heat from the mini computer and so it wouldn't be given an accurate temperature. In the past, I ran it all the way up here you know, to the top and had it hang it over. Uh, you may have seen one of the videos where all my cables were bunched up here with a big old piece of velcro holding all up on onto the uh, uh, the spacer ring and occasionally it would get you know caught or dragged or would push towards the camera and sometimes i found it behind the camera or underneath the the vents and so it's catching air so it wasn't giving an accurate temperature so i just found leaving it out here open towards the front is going to be a lot better to get a true air temperature of what's going on around you so the three cables came up, or the two cables at this point now, well now we're just back to the two sleeves, come up to the top here. And what I did, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this. So I took a piece of, of Velcro, uh, you know, adhesive Velcro, and I just wrapped it around the tube. And then I put the mating, let's see if I can get in there, then I put a mating piece here, just on the inside of my dovetail and my ring. So this literally just slides right in and it's done. So I had one here and I put another one here. Now this cable that you see coming over the top is actually the, the 12 volt wire for my dew heaters. And I laid it up here um, as well because originally I was, I did have it uh, just coming down off of the controller and coming down this side of the mount down here and back up and occasionally I would find it snagging so I was like you know what if I just run it all together so I just came around and then just took to, uh, just connected it with the other piece of velcro I don't want to be permanent I didn't want that to be permanent I want to be able to take that off and have it separate than the 
the main uh, controller cables. All right. And then uh, about every six to eight inches, I put uh, these little ties here. And um, sorry about that. The camera got a little jacked up. Here we go. Um, just put them in there in order to hold the cables inside the sleeve. That's all that was for. Just to do that. And that, uh, and one of the things you want to test, uh, and 10 foot seems to be a good number here. And, uh, again, I'll show you why in a minute. But when you're putting all this together, there's a couple things to consider. One is, uh, on your automatic, on your autofocuser, you always want to make sure you have enough space and enough slack to be able to go all the way out without pinching or dragging the wire. So right here, I'm racked all the way out, and as you can see, it's still, it's still playing the wire. It's not pulling down, it's not dragging down, it's not pulling down on the scope. And there's enough slack for it for the focuser to go in and out without binding and without attacking anything. So make sure when you're measuring out uh, that you give enough play and that you have a little bit of a hook here or a little bit of a loop to take up some of that play when it goes to expand. So, oh, there we go. So, all right, so the question comes up of, you know, why are we set up exactly the way I've got it? If you're asking yourself that question, I don't know if you are or not. So if you notice all the cabling comes up through the dovetail or on the dovetail, makes a loop and then comes back in and then comes back down to the front leg. And there's a couple of reasons why that is. Uh, the first off is you want to be able to have enough uh, slack and clearance, right? So that your cables don't get hung up on the mount and that your camera, that its power cable, doesn't get hung up on a leg or anything else. And so you just want to, when you're measuring out, you know, what I did was I just spaced up everything uh, and gave it extra slack so that I could get around the mount. I didn't, you know, permanently attach anything. But as you can see, you know, nothing's binding. And I left, uh, if you notice, I left slack on the bottom here. So you'll actually see that raise and lower a little bit if it needs to, depending on where the mount's at, where it needs to go. And that's why you want to have this loop right here that comes out. And that's pretty much it. That's really all you got to do. Um, measure it out, make sure you got everything where you want it, and then just, you know, sink, you know I just threw a piece of that 8 inch on here. It's got a slot. Uh, you can't really see it there, but there's like a slot. And the, the end of it comes through, and I just wrapped around the thing. So there's a little bit of give here for it to hang. But also, there's enough for it to raise up or lower, depending on where the scope is in relation. So there's just enough play in order for it to, uh, to be effective. So as you can see there, it's now pulling up. But if you look at the top cable, there's no stress on it. It's not pulling anything down. And no matter where I go, it's not pulling anything. It's just riding along. So at this point, you don't have to worry about uh, cable drag and the cables either snagging on your mount or getting caught um, uh, on, the, on the other pieces of equipment. So that's kind of a plus if you don't have to worry about that. And if you've got good cable management, you don't have a ton of cables laying all over the place. So if, if you just look down on the floor, I don't have a whole lot of cabling around the mount. It's pretty much all centered on the mount or in its immediate vicinity. The only cable that I really have coming out is the uh, the main cable for uh, for the main power the main power cable coming out, and even then, uh, and what I've done in the past is uh, I run that extension cable over uh, with the with the reel under here. I just use a, a, like a construction reel and just plug the end into there, and then literally there's only one cord coming in to the body of the mount. So if everything is tucked in within the space of your legs, you're less likely to trip over it or to snag it with your foot or if you're at home and you're in the backyard or something, 
Um, and the dog's running through, the dog doesn't snag it, you don't snag it, the wife, the kids, nobody snags it, hopefully. And um, if you have it with, within those tripod areas, because you'd rather kick the tripod than you would to rip the AC adapter uh, out of your camera, <laughs> out of the, uh, the end of it there, and possibly screw that up. And uh, this is the same thing here, um, which I was talking about, as far as uh, uh, you know, drying on the cables. You don't want anything pulling down on your cable. And in here, this kind of just worked well because for for those of you who have the FW8 or the five along with the ZWO, you know, you have that short piece of USB here, and it's just springy enough uh, to where I could put the um, I just Velcroed. Uh, my AC line onto it so that it's you know all supported, nothing's dragging, everything's just hanging there. A little bit of tension right there, which is just keeping that up. It's just that curl just provided enough lift to where it's able to support it, so you don't have to worry about it uh, pulling down on your power, on your power connectors and stuff. So that's it. Um, you know, once you run everything, just make everything snugged under something, you know, so it doesn't get in the way. Like originally this this bundle was out here and originally it was just wires hanging so I just you know looped them together like you would get them uh, from the factory when it's first packaged and then just threw a piece of velcro on it stuck it behind the handle there so that the camera power doesn't snag it when it's going around so hope that helps and uh, if you've got any questions feel free to drop me an email and uh, be glad to answer them or if you needed a close-up of something uh, how I did it, more than welcome to ask, um, but it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory for the most part. But uh, it works out well, and uh, I'm a lot happier with how clean it is, and I don't have to keep running, you know, one pe one cable, then run the next cable, run the third cable, run the fourth cable, run the space heater, yada yada yada. You know, most of my lines are just in now two, uh, two sleeves and I can just reel it up at the end of the night and uh, stick it back inside the magic box there and we're good to go. So, hope that helps. Clear skies.